a state of dissolution, so just for the whole afternoon. Uh, I come from Lisbon, I teach at two universities. Uh, I don't have two jobs, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I divide my teaching work in two uh, faculties. In one faculty, it's the faculty of communication, where I basically uh, teach uh, uh, art theory and uh, history of photography. Uh, but I want to talk mostly about the uh, the other institution where I where I work. It's it's the faculty of uh, fine arts in Lisbon. We don't have a degree in photography. No. Uh, there was, for many decades, there was just these uh, very common uh, programs of painting, sculpture, and more recently, about uh, five years, yeah, five years, it was created a new degree in uh, multimedia. So, but there was photography studies, uh, but as a part of, or as a kind of an atelier or studio, and there were some uh, courses uh, in, in photography. Every year there was a part of the program where students from painting and sculpture could, they were not obliged, they could go to have some training in photography. So, photography was assumed for Many years, just like a tool inside these uh, these fine arts universities. So, in, in uh, it was inevitable that in recent years there were so many also in response to how uh, students from painting and sculpture were getting more and more interested in photography. Uh, so, the was it was create this new program in multimedia, a BA and uh, 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 a master's degree. Uh, at the BA, uh, you have, uh, you know, you, you just go every year, you just go from these different uh, uh, technologies, you do, you work on video, you work on uh, uh, techniques of edition, animation, interactive uh, matters, uh, you have also drawing and the other disciplines that are common in this in general program. In the BA, uh, the structure is a bit different because right from the beginning, the, the, uh, there are just a few parts of the program that is common to several branches, but out of the program, it's divided into several branches. It's photography, uh, audio-visual, so many video, uh, performance, and animation. And what is interesting is that you know multimedia is a more kind of a trendy world, and that's why they didn't they didn't go immediately to a master in photography and what happened uh, and what's interesting that we see is that uh, most of the students they choose photography or audiovisual video you know like 90 percent uh, is the, of the students are going to kind of traditional disciplines you know. um, I'm not going to show talk so much about the school about the program, I, I would prefer to talk about uh, some ideas and some thoughts about the questions that were sent by the organizers. You know, I think were, I was, uh, and especially three questions that I find very interesting and very important. You know? uh, first, which challenges arise from the fact that currently all kinds of image technologies seem to amalgamate, example, photography and video. Second, will degree programs in photography sooner or later be replaced by programs dedicated to inter- and transmediality? And three, what is the role of the professional photographers in amateur cultures? I think these are three possible questions from many others that are crucial for 
for people that are working in universities, there is someone phones vibrating. Oh, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it's very important to clarify a few things uh, about what, what I was saying about ideas and remarks about these subjects. It's because we are now at my university on the verge to make a change in the program. Because, uh, as I said, uh, the candidates are applying mainly to video and photography, so they are thinking maybe let's remove performance and, and uh, animation, you know, uh, or maybe when you have like fifty or sixty or even more uh, students candidates for just for photography. You think, you think if it makes sense to create just a master in photography? Well, in that, I'm not going to uh, explore too much about this question, but I, I don't think it's, uh, at that context, it's necessary to, to have just one master in photography. And I think it's really important as well to have in mind that any ideas and remarks and criticisms that we have about some university programs, they have to be linked to specific uh, institutions. As we uh, understood from uh, today's presentations, a university of applied arts or an MA program in art or uh, schools where there's a big effort to train photo journalists or photographers that are going to be dedicating commercial work, I think the approaches can be very different, so the answers can be very different. So there is not only just one way to deal with these three questions that I've uh, uh, read before. And, and also in Portugal, it's, I think it's quite different to think, to have ideas about university programs when you're in a certain country with a certain culture of photography, how are the how, how institutions, and I mean institutions, I mean institutions that make the social field of art of photography, you know? I mean museums, uh, universities, uh, all the newspapers they lead with, deal with photography, uh, uh, publications, all these details are quite important to uh, that's why it's quite unique you know for example maybe you have the degree in photography here for many decades we don't have it in portugal no we don't have it in state universities you uh, well sorry they arrived they were created uh, about five uh, or ten years ago but only in polytechnic uh, in, uh, schools no? So, they were organized to prepare people for uh, applied uh, work, you know, working in newspaper, for photojournalists, for advertising, fashion, you know, so they were very much with this profile in mind, uh, but photography in a kind of a in an art context in, at the university, it's very recent, you know? Um, so at the, what it's mostly, in, for me, it's interesting uh, uh, and at the master, and it's, I, I, I'm coordinating a seminar where we do, uh, that we privilege three areas. You know? One, two talks on the history and theory of photography. And not just, uh, no, I would say talks on history and theory, no? <coughs> In, and this includes, of course, uh, history and theory of photography. Assignments to students, and the, the assignments they are, uh, for example, every year we try to propose uh, a project on on a specific theme, you know, or imagine 
to simplify. Uh, for example, last year I proposed that we would work on the topic of plates. No. Uh, of course, this would be a, a huge topic to talk. Well, of course, there were a lot of students working on landscape. Um, but for me, it was uh, uh, for 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 the department. It seems to propose these kind of subjects that they are mediators to discuss a lot of things. And then we know that uh, you can work on landscape to approach questions around the body, or you can deal with uh, archaeology, you can deal with memory. So sometimes, most of the time, this, it, the theme is, is thought in, in how to explore the theme in a very pedagogical way, you know, to expand the perception of the theme and the perception of photography. And a third, uh, a th a third thing that is quite important for uh, in my work with the students is really how to deal with the project, you know, how to develop uh, research tools how to deal with some conceptual aspects of, of, uh, of their personal uh, project. And, 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 and it's from, from here that we have been working just to really to, how to play between photography and the borders around uh, photography. And as I said, that the, the programs have to deal with a very specific context, and, and some of these uh, social and global uh, phenomena, of course, they are they are very they have their effects in a country like Portugal. But there are but I'm sure that they they um, the reality can have different kinds of intensity. You know, for example. Uh, of course, there are some changes that are global, you know, I think um, the fact that the, the industry and the economy of photography is changing, you know, and we realize this change from analog to digital, you know, uh, first of all, it's an economical and industrial uh, change, and when all these companies are changing from analog to Kodak or other companies are changing, they're not thinking about artists that are using photography. They're thinking about people in general that are going to buy the cameras. You know? They're not, 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 not thinking about authorship or they are not thinking about art that uh, uses uh, photography. But of course this has impact the way we uh, deal with the students. And it's not just if one prefers analog or digital, I don't care, you know, it's not my problem, you know, it depends, each student depends. But there are some pedagogical changes that are quite interesting. For example, I'm fighting every week uh, myself and with the students, how can we discuss uh, projects that are always shown with preview, you know? Uh, there is a total different uh, way to talk about images, you know? Uh, it's not just, you, you, so it's a, it's a process of increasing immateriality in photography, which is, it has its own effects. But at the same time, we see that the way people are editing photography, it's becoming tactile in another way, you know, how people use Photoshop, how people in general use iPad, or I see my son, so my, my four years old son, you know, using iPad, just a different kind of experience of the image. And I think in universities, we have to deal with these new sorts of uh, dealing, perceiving, and, and uh, using uh, photography. Um, and another thing which is important to think uh, at university, I have a kind of a very French uh, way of thinking the role of universities, you know, not so much as an American. We don't think we go to universities to 
to have a job in mind, you know? I think you go to university because it's a good place to be and to learn, uh, you know, to get older and uh, to have, uh, you know, to experiment, to, to receive some knowledge, you know? Uh, uh, but we cannot forget, you know, we cannot ignore that the market, the social field is changing. And for example, and I think this might be happening everywhere, but in photography in particular, there is an increasing, a growing devaluation of several uh, professional areas of photography. For example, in Portugal, to be a photojournalist now is terrible, you know? They are, you know, newspapers, they don't need uh, photographers, uh, or they just need them part-time, or, or, or they pay by piece, you know. Uh, fashion photographer, e fashion photography is weakening, you know, all the time. We, we, also, we also have these magazines like Vogue, Elle, you no, know, but everything is coming from abroad, it's production. You know. Um, advertising, it's a catastrophe for, for, for many photographers, no? I remember, I know some uh, advertising photographers uh, that in the early 90s they had like a studio 10 times bigger than this one, no? And then they had to sell the studio, you know? Um, and so, as you realize this growing devaluation of professional areas of photography, and at the same time the huge growth on, of modes of circulating and sharing uh, amateur photographic practices, this is interesting because um, this is changing the expectations that students have about uh, education in university, especially in photography. I remember when I talked with photog uh, uh, students of photography uh, until eight, ten years ago, they used to say, I want to be an artist, you know, with, photographer, with photography, but I'm sure that the, the first years are, are going to be difficult so I hope to have some commercial work uh, to have to cover my living costs and and production costs with my uh, artistic work. You know. Or you had the other side of expectations. You know. students that thought, no, 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 I want to, I want to have a job. You no, know. I want to build my studio or I want to be. Uh, I want to work for a newspaper, and on my free time, I'll do some authorial work, and I will try to do a show from time to time. This is completely changed. Students have not these expectations anymore. And in Portugal, when they are the last year, they think, I need a scholarship. Uh, I need to apply to a residency program. No? And this is changing completely. Uh, in my, the title I gave for my presentation is teaching photography in the, what's, in the era of obsolescence, no, right? Something like this. Yeah. I don't think, it, well, I'm being pessimist now, now I'm going to be optimistic, no. Uh, I think when I say uh, obsolescence, it's in a very, uh, I think it's, it's positive, no. I think it's, and I'm, I, I totally agree with what uh, um, Olivier told about disappearance, reappearance, and, and you talk about Walter Benjamin, you know, and it's interesting, Walter Benjamin uh, is still, when, when the photograph is too perfect, you know, uh, it's too, uh, it's not so interesting, you know. So when we are uh, reaching a state of precariousness in photography, that photography is 
to reach a, a point of being kind of an old discipline, I think that's a great opportunity for authorship in photography. And uh, that's why more and more, for example, if we're not at the university where I'm teaching, we're not thinking anymore about the markets, you know, we can really be focused on artistic photography. And we're, what I'm saying that you can be focused in art is not because it's great that it is art, but just because art is a privileged area to experiment, to think, and to scrutinize representations. That's the thing. No? And I very much agree where when the French curator Catherine David, she, uh, she said once, I'm not interested in art, I'm inter interested in representations. And that's how photography plays a very important role. And after, if, if, this, if the, photographer, the photographer or the, the author decides to show the work in a kind of a, uh, an art field or, a, or other social fields of photography, well, it's, I think it's not up to the universities or teachers to decide. I think what is interesting about art is a great uh, discipline to think, to explore, to question uh, categories, to dismantle categories around the experience of perception and, and thinking with images. And this means that, uh, that if we think about photography as a privileged field of representation, it means that also in now that we are living, uh, you know, with this tendency to mix uh, so many uh, technologies, and and if I don't think that technologies are, it's not about the question of inter or transmediality. I think we can approach that subject in very different ways. I think one is it is inevitable, you know? We are talking about photography and using a video projector, you know? So there is a part of, uh, of merging with other, other uh, areas that it's, it's a different way to show photographs, you know? But this doesn't mean already that it's mixing with video. So what I think about that is that it's important that a photography program that tries to emphasize what is specific in photography and in which way that specificity can be very productive when it interacts with other areas. No? Because I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to underline some kind of a the essence of photography. No, this is, I'm not trying to be like John Tchaikovsky, you know, that's, it's, but anyway, photography, what we're dealing with photography is still different in, su in, in some parts, it's different from painting and, and, and video and drawing, you no? Know? But I'm, in a while I'm going back to this. So I think, in my department, uh, the way I deal with students is to go beyond the specific iconology of photography. You know? To go beyond the equipment and processes of photography. So this means that photography is a kind of a technical and material territory with these equipment and these specific processes, but for me what is more interesting is to think about photography as a perceptive and experiential category, you know? and, and as a kind of a, uh, using the word of uh, expression of the view Uberman, it's a regime of visuality, you know? and, but this to recognize there is some specificity in photography, 
it's all and more than talking about photography, I prefer to talk about deep photographic, you know, as a category that it's attached to photography or it's promoted by uh, photography. But for that, to but it's important to recognize that the photography is not a category that is exclusive to photography. In other words, the photographic neither begins nor ends in photography because it does not belong to it, or rather, it no longer belongs to it. Just as a theatrical, this or theatricality no longer belongs onto theater, the pictorial no longer belongs only to painting, and the, cinem and the cinematic, cinematic is not longer restricted, restricted to being expressed in cinema. And that, what I found interesting in the presentation of Olivier, it's really important to uh, bring uh, things that are a bit outside the history of uh, uh, photography. Of course, it's normal that the photography historians, they focus on, on photographs, you know? But the history of photography it's not just attached to the history of photography, you know? For example, most of the time, you know, I'm trying to show different other things, you know? And, and in the era of obsolescence, you know, uh, it's, I'm not, uh, what? Yeah? Oh, my. I want to speak just, I'm, I don't think too much time. For example, I'm making a big effort not to show, uh, because I think students, uh, and they have at the BA, they had already uh, history of photography. But more and more, I'm interested in talking about uh, WG Zebald, you know? I'm trying to talk about the book uh, Ecorse of Didier Huberman, which is an amazing book about photography, you know? I'm more interested to show, you know, Abi Warburg, you know. I prefer to show Lajte, maybe it's the best work ever on photography and time. And I just, I just show one work of one student, <laughs> because it's a good example. This guy, Alexander Uzum, he was a fashion photographer all his life. And then he lost his work, he didn't, have, he didn't have anything to do anymore. So he decided to go to do a, a, an MA, you know. And, and after a while, you know, he, he came with, you know, at the first semester, he just wanted to do very artistic fashion photography. And we just, I tried and just go back, you know, try, you know, Try to create your own world, you know? Just forget professional photography that you have done for many, many years, you know? Just try to, I don't know what the expression in English of uh, Nelson Goodman, you know? The right was the, the idea to create a, world, a specific world, you know? And then uh, we, I, end, I end up uh, showing him uh, talking about Robert Smithson for a while, which is for me it's a crucial, uh, especially the writings, and they are very productive for the students. And after six months, he was doing just completely different stuff, you know. Uh, and that's I find it, that now it's the world is getting very very idiosyncratic, and that's I was very happy because I think this is the role of uh, a program in a university and. And, that, and what he has became, it's very much a kind of a new profile of uh, a photographer that wants to be um, wants to be an author, you know. And to answer what is the role of the photographer in a culture where it's where it's run by uh, amateurs, you know. I think. The photographer, it's more and more a multiple figure, you know. He has to be a producer, editor, historian, you know, archaeologist, a critique of images, you know. And, and theory and practice 
are indistinguishable for the contemporary contemporary photographer. No. And now, and just a few uh, last uh, remark. Now that we we trying to reformulate our program, I think for me, what I've told to my colleagues that we are in we are a university. A university is committed to produce knowledge and to reproduce knowledge. And in an art college, that knowledge comes from experimentation. No? So we cannot ignore, and if we, if we want to have a program in, in photography, we have to respect the legacy of the medium. And that legacy is really an encounter between what is specific and it's more general, no? And, and, and more and more just to, it's important to have uh, humanities uh, disciplines uh, that talk about history in general or more specific to the medium. But for example, I'm trying to really to stimulate, for example, drawing in that in our uh, MA, you know, because I think students, it's because not just we are not in, uh, expecting they're going to be to make works in drawing, but the experience of drawing is an experience of attention, you know, and it's a way to confront the way people and young photographers are uh, dealing with the new. Uh, with the new devices, no, the lack of attention. Everyone is. All the students seem to be very anxious. They try to do everything very quickly. You know, they have to be. They are. They imagine uh, the the result immediately. So drawing is something we're trying to to uh, improve to stimulate in our uh, in our program, and and also. How to incorporate other media, no, video, but not just video, no, sculpture again, painting, and it's not just because it's not just to trying to explain that uh, or trying to say that uh, painting can also be photography or vice versa. No, it's dealing with specific notions. And for example, what is interesting about for. Uh, to study, to have some experience in video, it's because you realize, you know, between these par paradoxes, between fixed city and uh, fixed images and moving images. You know? uh, we know that fixed images, they move. You know? And sometimes moving images, they stop you know? very frequently. You know? Well, Milan Kondera uh, used to say that memory doesn't make movies, take pictures, you know, take photographs. So I think more and more, it's not the 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 goal is not to have certain results in photography, but really to promote a different understanding, a more expanded in understanding of photography, and that's the word that we're still using, but we can change it if we. Find it more proper. No, that's the thing. Questions? Are there any more pictures from this group? No, because I just realized that I had uh, I didn't bring uh, words from students. I was feeling ashamed, so I just found. Uh, some words of these students. <laughs> um, actually, I was just thinking of uh, if we should have a merger of our universities because there are so many similarities in terms of discourse and uh, understanding of theory and practice. We could actually have a Swiss University of Photography, I could imagine, uh, right now. But then I would like to come back to your notion of the photographic uh, photography, which I very much like. This brings us back to what Olivier mentioned this morning 
that this dissolution, this process of dissolution of the dissolving, and it has been going on like for, uh, for more than one century, for two centuries almost. Because in the 19th century, we can see very clearly that the photographic is already detached from the photography. When you look at the uh, history paintings in the late 19th century, they're all based on photographs and they take certain aspects of the aesthetic of photography and, um, and bring them to, to history painting, to a very old school art painting where you can see photographies like shining through and it goes vice versa with mm. pictorialism from the 1860s onward. The photographies somehow like, pretend to be uh, paintings or uh, drawings. Mm. So I think um, the photographic, this notion of the photographic, it also gives us a sense of uh, history, a uh, deeper understanding of history, and uh, uh, somehow um, keeps us away from thinking of photography post historic notions. Mm -hmm. and dissolution, of course, is not a post historic phenomenon, but <coughs> it's been going on for quite some time. I found these this, uh, two notions very apt mm -hmm. uh, somehow. Um, uh, we are assessing this process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the photographic or photography that's something that could be applied to other medias. So you would talk about this cultural mm -hmm. important instead of this cultural important So Sorry? So we just, we're all thinking about our plan for reading in the education is all, <coughs> all fashion. Kind of categories that go along with mediums, right? Like sculpture, painting, photography. And then there's one way is to dissolve everything and say everything has to do with each other. But how do you kind of <coughs> have the gem then to work about the specificity of a medium, right? Because you don't want to declare it because the declaration of photography is too, it's too narrow. So I'm just questioning myself if you bring up the term just of the photographic. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But what would it be if you bring also up the term of this cultural, because this cultural and the bumper would make much more sense than if you say I go to the culture department and make a sculpture. Mm -hmm. So to be clear in the actual uh, <coughs> as the as the characteristics that defines the also, the problems in working with the medium. No, I think uh, I think with we, we, universities, this, they are still it, they are divided, and they are divided because it's, it's necessary to have some organization, not just not to be totally abstract. No, and what I'm saying uh, also is that. The photography department is just a part of a huge land, you know? And in that department, we have to make an effort to reinforce, uh, to update that, the legacy that it's attached to that medium, you know? You just go, in that department, you have the responsibility of that legacy, you know? But from that, in practical terms, students, they can, you know, they should uh, be able to to go to the other departments and 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 how they going to mix. I think it's just it's a more practical thing. But you know, it's just this is a huge uh, land, and each each department has to respect uh, that legacy. You know? I don't think I answered your yeah. question. We would like to step further. Just, I mean, uh, just in a moment, we need to explain how our department functions. Like, we have the specifications, so there is no department for photography. But we have, um, we have specifications, so the students enter like the photography specification, but then, like every second semester, they're completely free to, to sign in all other classes of the other specifications, as well as the other constantly um, classes that are mixed between the specifications. So we, we try to, to have this constant, so there is also, of course, growing in the photography department. There is no broadcasts in the fine arts department, there are broadcasts in the photography department. 
So we try to work at the borders of, of, of whatever it could be of the good influence for the, the to sort of learn about what is uh, specifically photographic, not to try to push everything into into an image and then be disappointed because it just can't work, you know. So, so yeah. In a way, we have already this this kind of connection mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the system, and we're trying to go a step further and uh, think like a whole department or what or other media. Mm -hmm. Because they can copy photography and there is fine art, because that means either you do fine art or photography, mm -hmm. or you copy new media or media art. So what's the difference between media arts and photography uh, in an art department? Um, and there are more than the questions. So mm -hmm. I thought you brought in a good idea to, to go with the photographic instead of photography. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the other is. Actually, I was going to say the same thing that you just mentioned. Um, your, your concept of Photography is amazingly close to what we at the art school of Lucerne in Switzerland are also trying to do. That made me wonder how, I mean, at the, um, how uh, your analysis of the, of the actual situation of medium um, uh, relates to uh, what you said about uh, the disappearing, uh, I don't know, uh, Prospects of professional journalists, journalistic photography, etc. What, what is the consequence of this for your education program? What is that you? What is it that you prepare your students for? Do you still write art with a capital A at your school, or um, prefer other, you know, professional? Um, Images or well, other the yeah, idea to be or oh, other professions. <coughs> I don't know to um, to be the focus. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, uh, I I don't. I don't think so much when I'm a student uh, about about professional areas of photography. As I said, I'm just focused in the uh, social values of photography or experimental values of photography. Uh, I don't think so much about uh, photojournalism, uh, but uh, I'm interested how uh, I'm interested in the new science of uh, documentary photography, you know, because that's something that is still very attached to the imprecise category that I have proposed of the the photography. You know, I think what happened, for example, with the with the photographs of uh, Abu Ghraib, you know, uh, they are very instructive to to just to see again, you no, know, still the connection between photography and the reality, you know. So if people uh, and when I'm uh, and I think it's quite interesting because there there were so many essays you now in the mid nineties about the end of photography. You no, know, I cannot imagine the amount of essays that I and books on photography after photography, the post photographic uh, era. You know, just. And, and I, I mean, the expectations about photography are, in many ways, are more or less the same, you know, because it is related to how we, the expectation we have regarding the photographic. What I think is, the only thing that I find interesting, you know, that's why when photography is becoming a kind of an obsolete uh, medium, and and we are very much aware of fragilities of photography. Uh, 
we didn't we didn't realize only in the with Photoshop that about the possibilities of manipulating an image, at least at the the uh, the experts on photography. But I think that the people in general have there is a wider perception. So this me that, that I find this as a kind of a, a, a factor why and it's quite interesting why. In, in the, I would say, 10, 15 years, there is so much theory, and I think interesting theory, that explores relation between photography and literature, uh, photography, how, you know, uh, photography and memory, uh, archaeology through photography, uh, why Abby Warburg has become so important again, you know. Uh, I think this is a kind of a, a movement into a more speculative uh, relation with photography, and that's interesting. <coughs> that's interesting. Uh, that's why I say the book of the uh, Dieuberman Ecos is just extraordinary, you know. A person that goes to Auschwitz, takes pictures, you know, sits with the pictures and writes about the pictures. It's very, very interesting. You know? Uh, there was Echoes, and what was the next one? No, I said the, the, so the word Lajete, the film by Chris Marker. Ah, okay. Lajete. Lajete. Oh, okay. 